Hello, in this problem, we're going to graph this absolute value function. Let's go ahead and go through its solution. So there's a couple different things happening here. And I think for me, the easiest way to go through this is to think about just the regular absolute value function. That's given by y equals absolute value of x. And if you remember from before, the absolute value function looks like a v. So it basically um, just looks like a V like this. So this is the graph of the absolute value of X. But you'll notice we have a negative sign here outside of the absolute value. So whenever you have negative absolute value of X like this, basically it's an upside down V. You have a reflection across the X axis. So basically it's going to look like this. So this would be negative absolute value of x. So we have a reflection across the x-axis. I'm going to write that down. So we are reflect. Let me just say reflect across x-axis. Okay, and that's because the negative sign is outside of the function. Whenever it's inside, it's across the y-axis. So just as a quick recap, in case you're curious, if it's negative f of x like this, so it's f of x is y, so the negative is on the y, then it's across x-axis. And if it's in front of the x, it's across the y-axis. So it's opposite. If it's in front of the y, it's across the x. If it's in front of the x, it's across the y. That's how I memorize it. Just a cool little cheap trick. Okay, so now we're doing some other stuff. So we've got an upside down v. And again, we know that because we have the negative here. Now, we're subtracting a number from the x value. When you subtract a number from the x value, you go right. If you add a number, you go left. So we're going to shift right 4. So shift right 4. Again, when you add to the x, it's left. When you subtract from the x, it's right. And then we're subtracting a number from the function. So we're going to go down 5. Down. If you add to the y value, you go up. If you subtract from the y value, you go down, which should make sense graphically, right? If I add to this y value, I'm going up. If I add to the y values, I go down. Except whenever it's with the x, it's opposite. So subtract, you go right, add, you go left. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're going to take this upside down v and we're going to shift it right 4 and down 5. So let's go ahead and draw the y axis and the x-axis, so there's x, there's y. And so from this piece here, from the origin, we're gonna go right four and down five, and I'll just do this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll put a dot right here. And then I'll just draw the upside down V, and I'm not gonna worry about finding the intercepts. Um, you could if you wanted to, let me just extend the graph here. So this will eventually cross here, if you wanted to find the y-intercept, what you could do is you could plug in 0 for x. Let's just go ahead and do it for fun. So putting a 0 where the x is will give us negative, and then absolute value 0 minus 4, minus 5. This will give us, again, the y-intercept. Just plug in 0 for x. This is negative, negative absolute value, uh, absolute value negative 4, <laughs> minus 5. The absolute value of negative 4, by the way, is uh, 4. So we just get negative 4 minus 5, so we get negative 9. That would be the y-intercept. And that agrees with the graph, right, because it's way down here. In any case, the main idea in this problem is that you realize that there is a reflection across the x-axis. You're shifting to the right, and you're shifting down. So you have both a vertical shift, a horizontal shift, and a reflection across the x-axis. And that's a very, very rough sketch of the graph. I hope this video has been helpful to someone. Good luck.